At this point on Business Edge, uh, we quick, uh, quickly look at um, the issue around South Africa's 2024 budget as presented by the country's finance minister recently uh, in Ogodongwane. And a PWC report was released looking at certain uh, issues as regards the budget and what can be achieved. So quickly, we we'll talk to uh, Christy Vigun, who is the economist and senior manager at uh, Strategy PWC South Africa. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, quickly, let me quickly get your reaction. To what extent will the lack of personal income tax bracket adjustments uh, impact the average household disposable income, considering various income levels and regional variations in the cost of living as presented by PWC? people will pay between 0.5 and 1% more tax. So that money gets taken away from their disposable income and it gets channeled to government. So that means that in a situation where inflation is elevated and the cost of living is going up, people will actually be taking less money home. It might sound like a small number, but when wage increases are very small and when inflation is quite elevated, those small numbers are actually quite significant. So um, could these changes affect probably tax revenue in South Africa's broader economy? Well, the expectation from government is that this will create for them about 16 billion rand in extra revenue. That's just short of one billion dollars, US dollars, if you want to convert that. So it provides government with extra revenue, but it does take away from uh, dis uh, disposable income, as I, as I mentioned. It means that the options for people to spend on uh, luxury items, to spend on, for example, furniture or appliances, there's added pressure on that as they continue to focus on essentials like housing and transport and food. So it is positive for government revenue. Now, um, over the long term, uh, could the lack of probably inflation adjustments to tax brackets lead to marginal tax rates that might deter investments? And if so, how might this be mitigated? So this is on the personal income tax side. I don't think this will impact business investment, but maybe personal investment, savings and investment because we're seeing a little bit more money taken away from the individual going towards taxes. So that could influence savings behavior. And in a country where the savings rate is quite low, that is certainly a point of concern. Okay, now uh, PwC also mentioned interventions in energy, logistics, uh, and safety. So can you please um, elaborate on the details of these interventions, their potential costs, and the anticipated timelines for implementation? So there's a bit of good news. Uh, since last year, and actually since the arrival of COVID, the, the relationship between government and the private sector has been very strong in trying to help the country overcome its challenges. And at the moment, the organization called Business for South Africa is working closely with government to help resolve some of the key challenges, specifically electricity supply, and also the challenges we have with railways and the port systems. So progress is happening. It is sometimes quite slow, and it will take, I think, into this year, probably towards the middle of this year, before we see any real progress. Uh, and that will then help us to have more reliable electricity. It will also allow us to move goods in and out much quicker during the, during the port system. So it's something that's very close on the horizon, and we expect results very soon. Uh, there's a projection of about 1.6% GDP growth, but beyond that, uh, how does PwC assess the potential for higher or lower growth? And um, what are the specific economic indicators that would inform adjustments uh, to this particular forecast? So that 1.6% growth forecast is what government has put down for the next three years. Uh, forecasts are quite varied. Our forecast is probably closer to about 1.2%. And it's all based on the assumptions you make on, on key items that we've mentioned. Electricity supply, for example, the speed of logistics, railways, port systems. So government is obviously, and I guess to an extent justifiably, encouraged by the progress so far. Uh, on fixing these elements and expecting them to have more positive impacts later this year and into 25, 26. Um, I think the biggest issue at the moment is still electricity. We've seen a, re a re reintroduction of load shedding and with winter months coming up in towards the middle of the year, there is concern that there will be higher levels of load shedding. So for me, that would be the one big factor that we have to monitor is, that, is the reliability of electricity supply. 
Okay, you've talked about um, positive signs of growth uh, for South Africa, but then PwC still identified some uh, potential risks. So uh, can you talk about some of these specific, uh, the specific factors that most likely might derail the positive economic outlook, uh, such as um, when we look at global energy price fluctuations, um, political instability, or probably natural disasters that South Africa has witnessed in the last couple of months? Well, I think oil prices, that is always a risk. If we see a significant increase in oil prices, weaker exchange rate, that means local fuel prices go up. We have monthly adjustments in the fuel prices, and that would then pressure inflation, which could mean we could see higher interest rates for longer. Now, all of those factors would be adverse for economic growth. The opposite is also true. If we could see lower oil prices, and we can see some resolution to what's happening in the Middle East, a positive impact on fuel prices could have a positive influence on inflation levels, and we could see interest rates actually coming down quicker than expected. And that's good news for consumers who are now feeling the pressure of paying a little bit more tax. Maybe on the monetary side, there's a bit of good news to think about. Okay. Now, um, beyond headline GDP growth, what specific metrics would PwC recommend to assess the success of the government's economic development agenda, considering factors like job creation, poverty reduction, and um, income inequality? Our biggest challenge is jobs, inequality, and poverty. And the, the way that you address that most directly is by creating more jobs. So the key indicators to watch would be job creation and the unemployment rate. Um, our unemployment rate is amongst the highest in the world. On a positive note, last year in 2023, we created almost a million jobs and we've, we've recovered all of the jobs last year in COVID. So there is some positive momentum there. And that's one to watch out very specifically because we need know that to address poverty and inequality, we need to create more jobs and bring that unemployment rate down. So very much a focus of government's development agenda and one of the key numbers that, that economists are looking at is that, that unemployment factor. Of course, we know that um, when it comes to job creation and um, executing the budgets for the country, it would have to do with funds coming in. So how might a sustained high budget deficit impact South Africa's credit rating and access to international borrowing? And what are the potential long-term implications for the cost of capital and um, public investments? Well, South Africa, because of the size of its budget deficit, needs to borrow a lot of money. We do have a, a well-developed local capital market, but we also borrow money abroad, and we also have foreign investors investing in the local market. So there is certainly an international component to thinking about debt. And as with most emerging markets, actually most countries in the world at this stage, because interest rates are high, the cost of borrowing is elevated as well. So we've got high interest rates because monetary policy is tight worldwide, but also based on our sovereign risk rating. Um, at this stage, the risk ratings are stable with the hope that at some point in the near future, we could see some improvements. For now, the cost of borrowing is quite expensive. And, and given how much debt we have, it is actually taking up a lot of our revenue.